How do I find the best partner for me? Great question. Before I address it, I wanted to thank everyone for being there at the Heart to Heart conference. It was such a pleasure seeing you all and studying with you. God should bless you with all of the blessings that you desire for yourself and most importantly with finding indeed your best shirt. So how do you find the partner for me? Uh, I believe that there are three golden rules. Number one, I think it's important to have common interests. If you don't have common interest, then you won't have much to speak about, you won't have much to engage about, and that can be an obstacle. But that's not the most important component. I think the most important component is golden rule number two, and that is to have common goals. That you have to have common goals as far as your values go, as far as your principles go, as far as your children's education goes, as far as the type of household you want to lead. That's tremendously important, common goals. The more the common goals you have, the better it is. And number three, I think you need some type of attraction, what's called in Hebrew, Meshichat Alev, the attraction of the heart. You need to have a click. So the three golden rules are again, common interests, common goals, and a click. If you have those three rules, if you know that they exist in your relationship, that you might have some type of future budding for yourselves together. Next question, please. Why is finding love so hard? Finding love is so hard because we don't know what love is and because we think that love is the way Hollywood tells us it is. And we live in, maybe we read too many novels, maybe we saw too many movies, but love is hard work. Love is a deed much more than it is an emotion. Love is the ability to give and give and give and somehow, after you've given so much, then you say, oh, I think I feel love. That's what love is. And I think that if we were to think of love in that sense as a deed that repeats itself time and time again, as a selfless, devoted deed, then we will find love sometime that will be driving down the highway one day and say, oh, I think I love this person. Next question, please. I don't want to settle down, so am I being too picky? Uh, well, it depends what you don't want to settle down for. You, I agree that you, there are things that you shouldn't settle down for, like common goals, like the type of household you want to have. Do you want to have a household that's fully Jewish? Do you want to have a kosher household? Do you want to celebrate Shabbat? These are things that I don't think you should settle down for. Uh, but if it's not principles, if it's not values, if it's not common goals, like we just mentioned, then, they, they, then yeah, you should certainly settle down if it's the type of paint you have on your walls, or it's the type of um, toothbrush you pick, uh, you can settle down with things like that. All right, and last I, question. I, I'm just gonna add one more. I, I'm thinking of my rabbi, who taught me one of uh, the best pieces of advice I've ever received. And he said that the difference between a wise man and a fool is that the wise man makes the important important, and the fool makes, uh, sorry, and the wise man makes the important important, and the trivial trivial. The fool makes the important trivial and the trivial important. I think it's true in relationships too. If you want to have a wise relationship, then you cannot settle down on the important, but you should settle down on the trivial. You should make the trivial trivial and settle down for that. Next. All right, last question. How do I know if I am dating my Besheret? I don't think you do. I really don't think you do. I think you first have to work on that love, first work on that relationship. And it will hit you one day, ah, oh, I think this is my brochure. But waiting for this feeling to come, oh, this is my brochure. I think that I found the one that maybe only exists one in one in a million, maybe 10 million relationships. Most people don't know immediately that they found the brochure. If they have all the ducks aligned, those three things that we spoke about, if they've given of themselves selflessly to that relationship, if they form the union that is lasting, then somewhat, some, someday, they'll be on vacation, they'll be at work, and they'll be taking a break and they'll say, ah, oh, I think this is my brochure. Thank you, God. But let's not fall into any illusion that we know that this is our brochure at the first sight. It just doesn't exist. I'm sorry to tell that to people. I'm sorry if it's deceiving, 
But I, I, I will say that if we get that out of our mind and finding love, finding true love, and finding a relationship that lasts, will be much more rewarding and also much more doable. That's it. Well, thank you again, everybody. You have my email. I think you have my number also. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to call me. God bless and Shabbat Shalom.